वेलकम बैक टू आवर स्प्रिंग बुट वीडियो सीरीज सो टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू कनेक्ट आवर स्प्रिंग बुट अप्लीकेशन टू माय स्क्यूल डेटा बेस एंड हेयर वी आर गोइंग टू यूज स्प्रिंग डेटा जे पी ए सो इफ यू रिमेम्बर लास्ट टाइम वी गॉट यूजर डिटेल एंड ऑल द यूजर डिटेल हेयर वी हैव मैंशन एज ए स्टैटिक डेटा बट दिस टाइम वी आर गोइंग टू सेव इन टू डेटा बेस so first of all you have to make sure you have installed mysql so here we will try to connect the local instance here we will create a schema and our first table and another tool you have to install that is called postman and using this application we are going to call our api there are multiple tools similar like this one but postman is quite famous and it's pretty simple so please install as i told you we have to use mysql to connect our database so what we have to do we have to first of all add our mysql dependency into pom.xml and we'll also add the jpa dependency you can open your browser and just search maven spring boot starter data jpa and you can open the first link so you can copy this entire line and you can come and inside the dependencies just come and try to add that dependency so here if you want you can mention the version or if you don't want you can just remove that version so we have added the jpa because we are going to implement very soon crud application and now we have to add the mysql connector so just search maven mysql connector and you can open the first link so here you can see this artifact has been moved to mysql connector hyphen j so you can open that one currently i am going to use the version 9 and this is the latest one so you can copy this one and you can come and paste it here so in case if that dependency is not coming inside here then what you can do just come and right click and go to your maven and just select update project so here you can just click okay so what will be happen it will go and check entire form.xml and if any dependency is missing it will try to add so we have done with all the dependencies now we are going to use the mysql property file so how you can get go to your browser and just search spring boot mysql property so you can open this one and here they have given one sample application so if you scroll down you will get this property file so just copy this one and open your application or properties file and here we are going to paste it so first of all we have to mention our database address so you can see they have mentioned here local host and this is the port number and here you can see mysql local instance and it is also at localhost 3306 if you don't have mysql then you can watch this video so my user name is here root and password is also here root so you can see we don't have any schema we'll try to create that schema so let's change as here test underscore db our username is we have root and password is also root so whenever we'll run this project it will go to localhost 3306 in mysql and try to see test db is there or not if you don't have then we'll get an error so let's close this one and try to again run our controller so you can see we are getting here error from hibernate and if you scroll down and here you can see we are getting jakarta persistence jdbc url so whenever you get this kind of error that means you have not created the database so let's try to create click here schema and just mention here test underscore db you can apply so once you apply you can see a schema has been created now you can close the server again try to restart so you can see here our application is running perfectly so currently database configuration has been created we already have mysql postman now let's call our first api using the postman so what is our url we have to use this url and the request type will be here get so what you can do just you can open your postman if you don't see this screen then just click on plus so here we have to mention here local host 
and our application is running at port number 8080 if you don't know how you can find it just see your console and you can easily identify your application is running at which port number after that just mention your api name and here api slash user is our endpoint and this is a get method so if you click you will get the two data and this data is currently we have mentioned in the code itself now we are going to remove this static data let's go back to your model and here we are going to change this model to our entity class you can create your separate entity if you want but i am going to use same class as entity so here you have to use annotation at the rate entity and you can import from jakarta persistence earlier it was java x now it has been replaced by jakarta so if you use annotation as entity that means it will treat like a table now we have to use here id as a identity so what you can do just use here at the rate id and you can again import from jakarta persistence and let's try to create auto generated type so what you can do just use here generated value and here you can put a strategy as generation type dot identity so what we are doing here we are keeping this column as auto generated id and we already have name and email and this is the constructor we have used if you want you can create another constructor but here we no need to use the id because now id will be auto generated so here constructor without parameter here we have two parameter and here we have three parameter so our entity is also ready now we have to work on controller so we will try to get request from the controller and after that it will try to get or it will try to insert into our database so how we can perform that kind of things so we have to create one repository so right click new just go to package and just type here dot repository and here we are going to create a interface and we can give the name as here user repository let's try to extend from jpa repository so just use extends jpa repository and here we have to pass our class so our entity class is currently we are using as user so you can import it and here id currently i think we are keeping as here long only yes long so just come and change as long so why we are using jp repository because already they have everything that means if you open that class and just type control and t you can see all the hierarchy so they have all the crud application thing you can see crud repository list repository everything even pagination and sorting is also there and if you expand jpa repository you can see they have all this function and this function we can use as a query that's why we are extending as jpa repository for now we have created our repository we already have entity now we have to just work on controller section now we no need to use this one so first of all we have to import our repository here so how we can do just use auto wire annotation and it will try to do dependency injection so just use private so what is our repository name user repository so just copy this one come to your controller and you can give your name as user repository now you can import this one let's restructure so user repository is there and whenever we will call this function we want to get all the users so how you can do just come here and copy user repository and just use here dot find all so let's change the name as get all users so whenever we we'll call this one that means it will try to retrieve all the user so now if you stop and again if you run so you can see here create table query has been executed and if you go back to your workbench and if you just refresh it here you can see one table has been created and you can see these are the column and if you try to select we don't have any data so if you call this api we'll just get as a blank array because we don't have any data at all 
how we can get the data now we have to create another api that api will be responsible to add user in database so go back to your user controller and just come and use here annotation as post mapping here we are going to use post api and you can create like public and whenever user will create i want that all the user information so return type will be your user give your function name as here create user and here we have to pass all the user data from postman so we have to use here annotation as a request body so you can see everything is coming from a spring framework web bind annotation and what kind of request we are going to get and here we'll try to get name and email so we have to use user in request body so it is just like request type so we will try to pass the same variable whatever we have name and email now what we can do just use return and user repository so how you can create just use dot save and try to pass our entity object so you understand we have created two api first one is get mapping here we'll try to get all the user and here we have post mapping using that one we'll try to add the user detail from the postman and it will save to our database so now you can terminate so let's create another api so just copy this one and change as your post now we have to pass the data from the body just go to the body and select raw and here just select as json so you have to pass the data into json format so first of all what is our variable name we have name and here you can pass the name as and second variable is email so just use john at the rate abc.com so let's call our post api just click on send so here you can see here we are getting id as you want and this id is here auto generated so let's cross check just get the latest data so you can see we are getting here our first data now if you go to first api and here it is a get method so if you call this one here you can see we are getting all the data so let's create another user john1 john1 click here so you can see we are getting response as the current user so whenever we we'll try to create any user that information will get it here because here we are returning as a user so whenever user will be saved it will try to return the save user data details so now if you go to the first api and just call here you can see we are getting two user now if you want to change as name one and email one so what will be happen just try so here you can see it is creating a user but name and email is null because we have not passed the variable name here correctly so if you see here here we are expecting name and email id so if we don't want to get any detail as null then just try to create here some kind of validation we will see in upcoming tutorial so you understand how to create user and whatever will perform you can see here hibernate and this is the query so whenever you will try to insert any data you can see this one and whenever you try to get all the data you can see select query so we have connected successfully our spring boot application to mysql database using the spring data jpl so in next video we will learn how to implement crud application